first take. Antonika, thank you. So it's been a little over a month since the blockbuster trade. And while Kyrie is feeling the love in Boston, Isaiah Thomas is still not happy about what went down, telling Sports Illustrated that he may never talk to Danny Ainge again. Here's what he had to say in response. I know that there's a lot of feelings that go on when, when these type of things happen. I was a player that was traded twice. So I understand um, his sentiments, but, you know, you guys know how much I love Isaiah. He's a great kid, and I wish him the best. Stephen A., does IT have a point here? No, he does not. He's wrong. Danny Ainge is right. Danny Ainge did nothing wrong here. Danny Ainge is a businessman. He's the general manager. He has to look out for the best interests of the Boston Celtics. I love Isaiah Thomas. He's a miniature dynamo. He was sensational last year. I hope he gets a lot of the money uh, that he wants, uh, but what he thinks he deserves, no. You don't deserve $200 million, which is around the number that Danny Ainge would have had to pay him if he kept him on board. And who did Danny Ainge trade him for? He traded him for somebody who's bigger, better, a champion, okay? And, and, and you take all of those things into consideration. It is what it is. And an all-star. Isaiah Thomas is a stud. We get that. He ain't Kyrie. I'm just telling you what I know. And so when you look at it from that perspective, it's perfectly understandable and plausible why Danny Ainge would make the move that he made. It was not personal. Um, and, you know, sometimes you might tell a guy things because a guy is your player until he's not. Not only that, you got to take into account the fact that Isaiah Thomas has that hip injury, and you don't know how he's going to come back from that. But he's looking for his money. Isaiah Thomas's frustrations don't lie in just Boston. As Max pointed out when he had his afternoon drive show in L.A., Max, when you had your afternoon drive show, you repeatedly talked about Isaiah Thomas. Why? Because he was consistently underappreciated and underestimated throughout his career, no matter where he played, Sacramento and other places. So the bottom line is, is that Sacramento, Phoenix, the list goes on and on. So the fact is, Danny Ainge didn't do that to him. Other teams may have, but Danny Ainge didn't do that. What Danny Ainge said is, I have to look to the future. It's not about right now. It's about what you're going to be two, three, four years from now. And at 5'9", looking for $200 million with a bad hip, I got an opportunity to get Kyrie Irving. How can I pass that up? That is not, that is not for Isaiah Thomas to hate on. And not, by the way, the one last point. He's showing that his heart is still in Boston. Now, I'm going to say that it's probably because mm -hmm. he's not playing and recuperating, but this is not a good look for you if you're on the Cleveland Cavaliers. What the hell are you worried about any age in Boston for? Your mind, your heart, and your focus needs to be in Cleveland with the Cavaliers. This is not a good look for him. Yeah, and because of the hip, he won't play for Cleveland for a hot minute now. And then who knows what it'll be like when he gets back. We all hope he's back to being the great Isaiah Thomas. What an inspirational player in person he is. And look, a lot of athletes like to think of themselves as very intelligent or articulate. And like everyone else, some of them are, some of them aren't. Some of them are very mistaken about their own intellectual abilities. Um, yeah. Isaiah Thomas always struck me and strikes me, continues to strike me, as a, a smart introspectful, introspective, thoughtful guy. Um, and I think what's happening here when you have someone like that who's obviously able to think about things as a mature adult and as a smart person, as a, as a well-rounded human being, when, they're, when they make this little sense, you know that emotion is clouding their judgment. Isaiah Thomas is heartbroken right now because he found a home in Boston. Remember, this is a guy whose father was such a crazy Lakers fan that he made a bet that if the Lakers lost to the Pistons, uh, I guess it was 89, he would name yeah. his kid yeah. Isaiah Thomas and honored the bet. That's why his name is Isaiah Thomas. That's why he would have given the Lakers a discount to play there. And yet he winds up on the Celtics and embraces it and plays his heart out for that city. And there are people in Boston who will always remember and love Isaiah Thomas no matter what happens for the way he played for that franchise. I know he's getting paid, although in his case severely underpaid. Um, mm -hmm. And I know the deal made sense and all that, but he plays with a kind of passion. He expected that on some level to be reciprocated in terms of loyalty from the franchise. And Stephen A, he even wrote in the Players' Tribune that he understood the decision, but clearly emotionally he can't well, get past it. I think one day he will. Max, Molly, can, I, I'd, I'd like to share something very personal with y'all about, because it, it, it touches on what Isaiah Thomas alluded to. One of the things he said in his quote, he said, what Danny H. did, knowing everything he went through. 
he's obviously alluding to the loss of his sister, mm -hmm. uh, who, who died tragically in a car accident at age 22 years of age. And our hearts go out to the, uh, Isaiah Thomas and his family because that's a loss that they'll never get over. And we totally understand. I lost, I lost my brother in a car accident uh, my, uh, myself many years ago. Uh, but it's just like what I went through this summer. We all, let me tell you, I'll never get over the loss of my mother. I cry every day, you know, and I can't thank ESPN and the NBA family and the entire sports community uh, for being there for me the way that they were. With their, you know, heartfelt condolences and, and the like. I still get it to this very day, even on, on calls from callers on my radio show and beyond. My point in bringing that up is to say they were there for me. That doesn't give me a license to then turn around and harbor expectations because of what I went through. I still have a job to do, and so do they. And if what I do doesn't work in ESPN's best interest or the NBA's community's best interest, Adam Silver, who reached out to me after my mother passed, and John Skipper, the president of this country, who reached out to me, they're under no obligation to sit up there and look at what what, what misery befell me and my family and moving forward saying, well, we're going to make business decisions based on that. Isaiah Thomas can't expect Danny Ainge to do that. Danny Ainge and the Boston Celtics, even Isaiah Thomas told us, the Boston Celtics were a first-class organization for there through every step of the way from him. To the players, to Coach Brad Stevens, to Danny Ainge, to Boston Celtics ownership, they were first-class all the way. These are the words of Isaiah Thomas. You don't get to sit up there and say, well, after all you've been through, like Danny Ainge owes that to you to not trade you for a better and bigger player who happens to be a champion. That's you can't ask Danny Ainge to do that. That's not fair to Danny Ainge, respectfully. I say that to Isaiah Thomas, who I love, and he's a great player. But he's not right here. He and just and I don't think it'll permanently be this way. And you're taking what he said literally, and liter you'd be right. You are right. If that's literally what he means, that's the reason he doesn't want to talk to Danny Ainge. That's one thing, but Stephen Look, A. Is, the quote. As, uh, of course, of course, right. If, if, if read literally, you have suffered family tragedy, as have I, as have many people in our audience. And if, when I think about my own reactions to my own experience in that regard, I became irrationally angry at the world. And that, that anger would take objects that didn't deserve it sometimes, right? Like you get upset okay. at people because it needs to express itself somehow. And, and, and in this case, it's a pretty obvious target, Isaiah, because he lost his sister tragically, comes back to the team, plays his heart out for that team, as, as he did all year under those circumstances, feels he has a real relationship with Ainge, and then, and then Ainge is not only the decision maker, but all the, also the harbinger of bad news. He's delivering the bad news. Um, and so you could understand why that anger takes its spot on you know, Danny Ainge. Its target becomes Danny Ainge, even though it is irrational in, in, a, in a bigger sense. And I think that I think that eventually Isaiah Thomas will see that because he is a thoughtful guy. Well, I would say this. Your points are valid. Isaiah Thomas's points are valid if Danny Ainge looked him in his face and said, you're not going anywhere. I'm not trading you. We're going to resign you. You're everything to this franchise. But I watched Jackie McMullen on SportsCenter yesterday with Kerry Champion. They were talking about how all year long people were speculating in Boston as to whether or not Isaiah Thomas would be back next year. Jackie McMullen, a great Jackie McMullen, said she didn't think he would be, that ultimately she thought he would be traded. These are the kind of things that he was aware of. And if he were aware of that, unless Danny Ainge looked him in his face and lied to him, he does not have a case against Danny Ainge here because there's nothing business-wise that's wrong about the decision mm -hmm. that Danny Ainge made to move him. And there's the, nothing wrong with and it. And that might be the thing, Stephen A. He learned the valuable lesson that it is a working relationship, even though it felt like a family type thing at the end of the day. It is it's business, always a working right? relationship in business. Always. All right, gentlemen, when we come back, Cavs fans will not like the latest coming out of